Yo, 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 what's going on guys? Spoofy29 here. I'm here with the YCS Toronto champion, Patrick Hoban. How are you doing, bud? I'm doing well. Um, so you won. Yeah. I how, does it, how does it feel? Uh, it's good. How was draft? That's what I really want to know. Uh, I actually really like this draft. Um, they made it so that all the, all type, any type is all types now. And all the cards are really specific. It's like Wonder One, you could equip to any monster and tribute it and draw two. And then... Well, that's kind of busted. Yeah, so it's it's actually really cool. Um, because of that rule, almost every card in the set is playable, which I think is like a big improvement over the last two. And um, so I think I think draft was pretty good this time. Okay, and everybody wanted to know like what you were going to play. And I kept on getting asked a lot if I had your build. What did you end up deciding to play? Uh, I played Shadals with Lightsworn. With Lightsworn? Yep. And what was your record after Swiss? Um, okay, so day one was eight rounds, and I went 8 0. And then the last two rounds on Sunday, I just showed up and scooped so that I could practice draft. Okay, and you finished what after Swiss? Uh, you know? Like, like 11th. 11th? Okay. Okay, well, let's see this deck list. Okay. I really want to see right. this. Um, all right, so for the Shadals, I played three beasts. I think he's like the best one. He's the one you just always want to send. Um, some of the other ones, like uh, Dragon, for instance, rely on. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Dragon relies on like your opponent having back row. Um, <laughs> this card is just always good, like drawing cards. Um, then I played two Squamana. I guess that's pretty standard. Um, and just sending an extra card to the graveyard uh, helps fuel Soul Charge, and it's just more shit all names, I guess. Um, two dragons. He he's pretty solid just because he's like <laughs> one of the better standalone cards. <laughs> uh, just one Falco. Why only um, one Falco? I've seen a lot of people start doing this. Yeah, uh, it's not that I necessarily think two is bad. It's just. <laughs> You don't want to open. Uh, you don't really want to open Falco, like um, since he can only bring back other monsters. And you know, if you if you have him in your hand turn one, then it's just you're not gonna have a graveyard full of shadows. So okay. Um, he's also just an extra normal summon. So if you have let's say three normal summons in your hand and then two other cards, you can only use the one normal summon and then the other two cards. So it's just too slow. Yeah, it's just okay. like you have a lot fewer options if you have a bunch of normal summons in your deck, so I wanted to minimize those. Okay. Um, also going with that, I, I only played one Hedgehog. Um, I, I guess that's kind of different. I, I think most people play at least two, and a lot of people play three. Um, it does the, it, it reduces the normal summons, but the main reason for this is like, most of the Shadal builds are really focused on uh, Shadal Fusion, and I guess you see that my build isn't as focused on it. It can do other things. Like, I, I played um, uh, Raiden, so I can make Synchros and uh, Chaos Monsters. Um, so Fusion isn't as necessary to get to turn one. Okay. And the, once you have the first Fusion, um, Hedgehog's just really bad. Okay. Um, and the only, the only reason I even played one was because of the mirror match where you can send it to the grave or send Squamata to the grave to send this mm -hmm. and then add beast to your hand so you can tribute the fusion to set a beast you don't leave an extra deck monster up on the field um, for them to be able to fuse this back mm -hmm. and those were all the shells I played then for the lights horns I played three Raiden and two Lila um, now what made you want to go with the light swarm build over those other standard builds so, I felt like Shadal's had a lot of problems before where people would play um, the white and black dragons and they just were kind of out of place. Like, you would summon and exceed with them and it wouldn't really accomplish anything. Like, you weren't even searching the other one and you'd make a go over. It was extremely underwhelming. Um, and the deck was really, really slow and it didn't have a good soul charge and it was really weak to a bunch of floodgates. And I felt like uh, a small Lightsworn engine fixed a lot of that. Um, this Lila is obviously a good out to Shadow Imprisoning, and 
it, it, it's a better out to shadow imprisoning than MST is in a lot of ways, just because if I use uh, MST to kill the shadow imprisoning, then you know it's gone. But now if I use Lila to kill it, I could potentially mill a shadow in the end phase. Okay. And then like it, it keeps the engine going, and then Raiden does the same thing. And I only wanted to play Lightsworns that had good effects during the main phase. I didn't want to have to like give up my whole turn to try and mill something in the end phase. Um, so Raiden worked uh, a couple different ways where it let me make synchro plays with white, uh, white and black dragon. And it let me uh, try and get shit all effects to the grave during the main phase one. Um, and it also gave me a really good soul charge because I could just like summon this mill, uh, even hitting like a Lila. If you soul charge these two back and then mill and end fi uh, with five, most decks can't deal with both of these. You're getting five mills, so you'll probably hit like a Shadal or two in there. And then it's just for each one you hit, it's just like a plus one. And you get really far ahead. Um, and then late game, the, and the soul charges get it pretty crazy like and out of hand um, these also kind of gave you the ability to kill your opponent because before all the Shadals were really awkward levels like Beast is 5, these two are 4 uh, Hedgehog does nothing and Falco is I don't know not very good for a tuner um, because of the level, like you don't really want to make sevens or sixes, and those are just not the better synchro levels. But um, playing Raiden, it lets you make consistent rank four and level eight plays. And I guess, oh, I, I originally was playing Lumina, but it's not live during the first turn usually. I was playing Recharge when I played Lumina, but Re Recharge was pretty much the worst card in the deck. It was dead a pretty high percentage of the time and Lumina was always dead in the first turn and then it was really weak to Vanity's Emptiness um, so when I ended up cutting Lumina I cut the recharges with it so then I just drop through these and I play a charge as well so I guess it's like a six card engine but I, I just think that the lights ones fix a lot of problems okay Okay, that sounds good. And how'd you like these? Uh, these cards are actually amazing. I was thinking about just playing two and one, but the reason I didn't is because a lot of the time with the lights horn, you'll like mill one of these, and then um, if you uh, you won't you won't be able to search another one after that, um, okay. and just like keep going. And these cards can apply just like constant pressure to the opponent. They're especially good in the mirror match because they. You, w you win the mirror not by not using your extra deck, but still being able to apply pressure by like summoning mm -hmm. dragon attacking or whatever. And these cards do that um, a lot better than the uh, uh, opponent can if they don't have it, where if you summon these two, it's a lot of damage and it puts them on a pretty short clock so that they have to go into their extra deck to okay. get over it. And then that's where you start taking over in the mirror. So that's how you win the mirror. Yeah. Just apply a lot of pressure. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and then I played uh, Black Cluster and two Chaos Sorcerers. How'd these work for you? Um, they were actually really good. So one of the things I did is I built my deck trying to be really strong against Vanity's Emptiness because it seems like all three of the top decks were playing three of them. And while these cards aren't good against a face-up Emptiness, obviously, most people don't just like flip Emptiness immediately. So they'll wait for Shadal Fusion or Soul Charge. Mm -hmm. um, and in that case, since they're inherent, you just can summon them and then you have the out to vanities already on the field um, and they're also a threat in the mirror without using the extra deck it's bigger than Winda and it just deals with threats um, pretty well like they're n not dead very much outside of maybe the first turn but usually even then they're they're only dead for like the turn usually the other cards in your hand will make them live okay just take a turn or two. And how many monsters is that? Uh, 21. 21? Yep. All right. How about these spells and these traps? All right, for the spells, I played three fusion, three upstart, three soul charge, 
Um, so soul charge is actually something I think is worth talking about. I think that soul charge is definitely just the best card in the game, and usually or the regular build of Shadal can't really use this card very well. You'll see people play zero, maybe one. I guess I've seen two, but it's not. They're not wrong for only using less than three because whenever you play Soul Charge in the deck, it's extremely underwhelming. Like you're getting mixed uh, mismatched levels, and um, they can't really deal with established fields without the battle phase. For the most part, they have to make like Arcanine, and it's just easily stopped and kind of underwhelming, and they can't make defense, but um, so, but because I think this is the best card, I think that the best deck would definitely play three of them and be able to do so well. So um, the Light Sworns obviously contribute to this, and they also give it the base four level so that I can make rank fours and uh, level eights. Um, and I may, I played Evil Swarm Nightmare as a way to make defense off this so that I could just revive like Skolmata or Dragon and overlay them into this. And what uh, Nightmare does is when your opponent specials as a monster, you need to attach one to Book of Moon it. So you could just soul charge, make a big field, and then make Nightmare at the end, and then you don't have to actually draw a trap card with your soul charge for it to be good. Okay. Um, Seems pretty good. I probably would have played Giant Hand instead because they're, they're pretty much the same, except the Giant Hand has 2,000 attack, uh -huh. so that you can switch it to attack mode and attack for okay. damage. How much attack does this have? Uh, I think like 850, 950. Oh, Lord. Yeah, so you can't really do much with him. When you're summoning him, he's usually in defense, um, so you can't put your opponent on any kind of real clock with him. So I think Giant Hand would be better, but I didn't have one. Okay. Doesn't Nightmare also uh, keep, like, doesn't it book a moon all of them if they still yeah. charge multiple yes. monsters? So that's pretty good too. That's actually very good. Yeah, yeah that was uh, the one place that Nightmare was better than um, Giant Hand was against opposing soul charges. Uh, oh, but Giant Hand was also better because you can make it with Wyvern Brewster, the uh -huh. uh, White Dragon, and you can't make that because it takes two darks. Um, and I played. A lure of darkness, just for consistency. Like you, the more cards you have in your hand, the more options you have. So, I would rather um, be able to choose, like, I see more cards and then have an option to remove something than just be stuck with whatever I draw. Um, the charge to get the light sworn, and then three super polymerization. Why'd you end up main main decking three of these? Um, well, the formats pretty defined at this point that uh, Satellar Knights, um, Burning Abyss, and Shadals are the top three decks, and this card is pretty insane against all three of them. Um, it clears Dante. Satellar Knights can't deal with this card. If you if you draw this card against Satellar Knights, it, you just win. Yeah, you, it, it honestly just is that simple, because like you can summon a Skolmata, attack, They'll try and like flip D prison or something. You chain this, summon a construct, get Squamata's effect, get the construct's effect. They lose their monster. If they had a trap card, is now uh, if they had the counter trap, is now dead. Like this card just puts you so ahead in that matchup. Um, and then in the mirror, it's honestly how you win the mirror a lot of the time because it puts so much pressure on your opponent. Mm -hmm. um, but it's really tricky in the mirror because you can't just set it because they'll pop it with dragon a lot of the time. And so you, you end up having to hold it in your hand until you've cleared all their back row and then set it on the turn that you want to, like, put yourself in the winning position to win the game the following turn. Okay. But it, it's definitely very crucial to me. And then... How many spells is that? Uh, 14. 14? Yeah. Then... I played three Vanity's Emptiness. Card of the format, in my opinion. Yeah, I think Vanity's is pretty good. Um, I was going to only play two, honestly, because when I think about it, it doesn't seem like what a three of should be. It's You can't draw it when your opponent already has a field and mm -hmm. it'd be good, and it, it requires you to have a field for it to be good because you don't really just want to chain it to your opponent should all fusion when you don't have any monsters on the field. Like, that's not very good. You're going to have to end up turning it off yourself mm -hmm. if your opponent doesn't. So, um, you know, it just doesn't... Oh, and you never really want to draw two either. So, like, it just doesn't seem like a card that should be played at three. But it's it's just... 
actually really, really good. And to the point where you can have those reasons for why you shouldn't play it at three, and mm -hmm. it's still just good enough that I guess it should be played at three. Um, additionally, the the Raiden being able to make uh, level eight synchros in this deck, it, it lets you make start a Spark Dragon pretty consistently, so you can back this up. Um, okay. Play the Spark Dragon a fair amount of the time. And then I played two Sinister Shadow games. Now, why didn't you max out on this either? Um, so. I guess it seems like an obvious three of, but there's a point where I was even playing zero because you run through your Shadals really quickly, and a lot of times you'll have zero left in deck. Mm -hmm. And you'll draw this like late game, and it'll just be completely dead. Or the other thing is, while it is really good first turn, and I would almost certainly want it in every opening hand, and even multiples in every opening hand, I don't want it as the game goes on, even if I have Shadals in my deck. It's a lot of options, like it could be Dust Tornado or Jar Greed or, you know, set the um, Falco or whatever, but the its biggest problem is that it's a trap card, so if your opponent has uh, monsters on the field where they're going to apply pressure and you draw this, it's not going to be good because you have to set it and wait a turn to get value out of it. Like, I, I guess it's kind of why people play Upstart and not Jar of Greed. Okay. Where you don't want to have to set it and wait to draw a card. It's it's kind of the same thing um, here with Sinister. So I just ended up playing two. But it is still really good. And you do really want it in pretty much every opening hand. All right, and that was the main deck? Yep, that was the main deck. All right, what, what about this extra inside deck? All right, for the extra deck, I played three Construct. Um, Construct, I think, is actually better than Winda in this deck because this isn't really, you're not really trying to control the games through making your opponent not be able to special summon. You're trying to, like, do the next thing. It's almost like a combo deck instead of a grind deck where, um, when you summon this, you can you know, set Falco to keep going after that or whatever. When you summon Window, you're just kind of trying to sit there and um, at, if you're playing it more like a combo deck, you're not trying to control the games through making your opponent not be able to special. You're trying to, you know, just do what's next. And then um, it also came up with Super Poly a lot that um, maining three caused me to need the third one a fair amount of the time. And I only played two Winda as a result. And I think I only missed the third window one time during the tournament, uh -huh. so I guess it wasn't that big of a deal. I, obviously, I'd play it if I had an unlimited extra deck, but um, I, I think three and two is for construct to window is better than two and three. Then for synchros level eights, I played scrap dragon and spark dragon. Um, level sevens, I played arcanite and. Uh, Black Rose that I took out to play this tonight at Locals, but <laughs> there, was a, there was a Black Rose in here. <laughs> I summoned it like three times and it was never the right play, but whatever. Uh, and I played Goyo, um, Volcasaurus. That card is very good, actually. This card opinion. is good. Um, the coolest thing about this is it lets you deal with your opponent's field when you've played your soul charge and you can't attack, but you mm -hmm. can still kill their monsters. I think that's the best part. And it's also just game ending, like yeah. the ability to steal know. a game is just like insane. Yep, uh, definitely. Uh, I played two Castell. How'd you um, like this? Originally, I was playing um, one and a one one instead, mm -hmm. but it turned out that Castell was almost better in every single scenario, where against Burning Abyss, you would need to spin Dante, and Dante would be in defense mode, so you would summon Castell, spin one, and then later in the game, you'd end up needing a second Castell, and then if it's in defense, one-on-one -on -one can't do anything to it, so Castell just seemed better. And also, Castell has the um, added benefit of working well with Beast in this deck, so what a lot of the time would happen is you would soul charge something like these back, and then you would overlay and make Castell and Castell's other effects. You can detach one to book a Moon monster, so you could flip Beast down. And that was actually like a really good play. That was actually one of the more common first turn soul charge plays with um, 
Raiden. Like, if you hit a school mod, you can do that play if you have Soul Charge in your hand. Okay. Um, then I played an Abyss Dweller. This card didn't really come up much outside of the Burning Abyss matchup, but it seemed pretty necessary there. And then Nightmare was the last card. What about this side deck? Did you regret not playing Key Beetle? That's another card I've seen a lot of people play. Um, not really. I When I first started playing Shadows, I was playing Key Beetle, but it never really came up. And then there were times where I had it in the mirror match, where I, ha I had even Key Beetle Emptiness or Key Beetle Double Emptiness, and you would still just lose this, a lot of those games because they would do something like Set Dragon, Bounce Key Beetle. And then, I don't know, you're not in a very good position. So like if those... If it's not letting me win games like that, then it just doesn't seem very necessary. Okay. For um, the side deck. For the side deck, I played three Flying Sea um, for Burning Abyss. Yeah, they contribute it for a Monarch, but most of them only play a couple Monarchs, and if they don't have it, then they actually just can't play the game. So, and it's, it's also just a Regeki, almost, on your opponent's turn, so it's pretty good against Burning Abyss. They can't... They can't really win if they can't use their extra deck. I guess Billy and Jeff played a more Monarch-based build, but you know, coming into this event, that wasn't really the standard, and it wasn't what I was expecting to play against. Um, then I started two Raiko. Raiko was mostly for Satella Knights, because it's a good out for Shadow Imprisoning, where a lot of times they'll have a Shadow Imprisoning up, and you'll just set a monster, and they'll attack it thinking that you're just trying to stay alive by setting, you know, Shadals or yeah. whatever, and then it's a Raikou and you get to pop Shadow Imprisoning. And just like uh, I talked about with Delilah, it's kind of better than MST in that you could hit a Shadal and then just gain even more advantage. Uh, I played three Mystical Space Typhoons. Um, I, I don't like this card, honestly. Why is that? <laughs> I just feel like... You, I guess you have to play it because of the floodgates where, you know, it's drawn out to the floodgate or you can't play the game. Yeah. But other than that, I don't really want to take a card away from me and take a card away from my opponent. I'd rather us both just have more cards because then we have more options available to us. Mm -hmm. And MST just takes away a card from both players. So um, without floodgates, I'd probably just stay away from this card. But because they're so... Um, prevalent, especially this format where everybody's making three emptiness and people are signing shadow imprisoning in every deck if they're not playing uh -huh. arcs themselves. You just kind of have to play it. Um, mind control this is mostly just for the mirror. This card's incredibly ignorant. Uh, I, I lost one game where I thought I had like the best start, where I I, I, I played my fusion, sent Squamata, sent Falco. And special back to Falco face down and attributed my fusion f to set a beast and then um, set like Vanity's Emptiness or something. And I, I thought I was in a great position, and then he just goes, My control beast. And then the game just immediately goes downhill. Oh my goodness. Uh, uh, this card's <laughs> insane in the mirror. Um, then I cited one compulsory, it was also just for the mirror mostly. Uh, one chain disappearance, this card sucks. <laughs> uh, yeah, it's pretty bad because um, what would happen is you'll hit like a Skarm and then they'll already have one in Graveyard and this card doesn't banish from the Graveyard so they can just bring it back off Seer. Uh, they can just bring back the Skarm off Seer and then just keep going from there. Okay. Um, like, sure, it's nice if you can hit Tour Guide, but I don't know. I'd, what about hitting Dante? Not very That'd ideal. Any good? Uh, yeah, 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 certainly, but... Um, it, it kind of has the same problem with uh, with Skarm, where they're going to have a Skarm in the grave most of the time after the first turn, and they're going to have a Dante either on the field already mm -hmm. or in the graveyard after the first turn. So if you draw this first turn, it's great against Dante, but if you draw it after that, even if you're hitting a Dante, you're probably leaving one in grave that they can just get back. Okay. Um, I played three rivalry in the side deck. Uh, I think this is one of the best floodgates. Um, it's really what you want in a trap card, where they can't play until they draw an out to it against any deck that you're signing it against, like Medulce's or Water, for instance. But you can also draw it when they already have a field, and then it'll just send the rest away, so that's really strong. 
And then the last card in my side deck was the third Shadow Games. I sided this um, just in the mirror mostly because I think um, it's especially important there where you're not going to get Shadow Imprisoned and the game is really, really back and forth. There aren't very many blowouts in the mirror at all. And this is just a great grind game card that'll put you further ahead than most of the other grind game cards would. And, um, yeah, that's the side deck, so that's 15. Well, good stuff, Patrick. I'm uh, very happy you won. I think, well, thank I think everybody around here is very happy as well. You pretty much just told everybody you're the best player, and <laughs> that's pretty much it. You know? <laughs> so I really do appreciate this deck profile and this yeah, interview no and the card analysis. I know a lot of people wanted to see this and hear you talk about all the card choices you made. And as you said, you did fix the deck, in my opinion. So, <laughs> yeah. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, Until next you. time, guys. Uh, this is Spoofy29 with the Car Guys. Uh, we'll see you later.